This is Twit. And I'm very excited to be joined by Sabrina Ortiz, senior editor at ZDNet. Uh, who knows a thing or two about AI? Welcome to the show, Sabrina. Hi, everyone. I'm super excited to be here. Big day. Yeah, it absolutely is. So this is pretty cool. I originally uh, was bringing Sabrina on to talk about uh, OpenAI's open source platforms. And this morning I got an email and <laughs> Sabrina said, uh, you know, GPT-5 is about to be coming out, right? And I said, oh, can we talk about that instead? And you are ready to talk about it. So let's so let's excited. kick things off. Yeah. I mean, you, I imagine uh, watching the, the announcement, um, could you tell us kind of what you expected going yeah. into it and what we're kind of looking at with this latest model. Yeah, this is one of the rare cases where what you expect is actually what was released in the best way, right? So basically what this model does and the highlight of it is that it takes the guesswork out of the entire equation for the end user. So as you probably known or seen on ChatGPT. If you're using it, there's a model picker. If you were a paid user uh, specifically too, there was a model picker and then you could pick amongst the alphabet soup of <laughs> open AI models, right? Like there's O3, O4, this, a mini that. And then you would ideally pick the one that was best suited for your own prompt. So if you were doing a really complex coding or math problem, you'd probably opt for a reasoning model like O3 or O4, but then O4 kind of sounds like 4O and 4O is one of the GPT models that you could use <laughs> for like mostly everything. So it's like an alphabet soup and it's confusing. So basically what GPT-5 does is it has two uh, models already in, in it where it knows where it's either reasoning models or um, our standard, you know, like GPT all purpose general query model. And it'll automatically be able to pick it for you depending on what you input. So this just makes it so much easier for the end user because now you don't have to guess and now you get to either balance, you know, speed and uh, quality in a much more optimized way where you're not guessing. Okay, that makes sense. Now, yeah. when it comes to that, does that mean that if I'm using GPT-5, mm -hmm. I'll still be able to, for example, give it a photo and it'll analyze the photo properly, or I can say, generate a photo and it will do that, or I give it some code. I It's, it's like the all-in-one package, truly? Yes, it's all in one. So basically everything you were able to do before, you'll still be able to do now. Uh, but the biggest highlight is that for both free users and paid users, you'll also be able to do some of those reasoning more or take advantage of some of those reasoning capabilities. Free users previously didn't have access to any of these reasoning models. Now, because it's in GPT-5 and everybody's getting access to GPT-5, you'll be able to do the same queries you used to do before, but now also do those bonus, like really complex math coding problems and get that higher level assistance. Understood. Now, one of the things that you talk about in this uh, early piece uh, related to GPT-5 is performance improvements. And yes. given kind of the bigger highlight about it being uh, this, this all-in-one tool and taking out the guesswork, I think some of the other improvements fall, fall by the wayside. Can you tell us about what we're seeing in terms of uh, performance? Oh, yeah all around it's gonna be better performance, right? Like one of the biggest perks or advantages is taking out the guesswork, but like you mentioned, that's not to uh, ignore the actual uh, advantages in performance when it comes to coding. When it comes to health, uh, it's a really interesting one. There's uh, really there's new benchmarks showing that it's way better at uh, answering health related queries. And you know, a lot of people have been turning to ChatGPT to ask things like, "Hey, I have these symptoms," or "Hey, uh, what best treatment plan should I take?" And now it can better assess those. Uh, but altogether, it is a the most uh, capable model that they've released. It is smarter and it is faster. Understood. Another thing that you talk about, and again, I think uh, another important aspect, safety. And yes. you say that there are improvements here in, in safety. What does it mean when an AI company that makes <laughs> a, a, a chatbot, uh, a model, 
what does it mean in terms of safety? Because we're not talking about a robot, an automated robot that's suddenly picking up weapons, right? <laughs> what is safety for for this this GPT-5? Hey, that's a great question. And also would like to caveat before we even talk about it that we have to take it with a grain of salt, right? It is ultimately an AI company claiming that's making a model safer, but they're also in the interest of developing these super intelligent models that are prone to hallucinations and all sorts of things. So we have to take it for a grain of salt. But yes, when we're referring to AI models and safety, we're talking about things like hallucinations, where uh, it's just a term describing when they output information that sounds really plausible and sounds really real, for, for lack of a better, true, for lack of a better word. And then it's false just because they're trained to, you know, mimic human language and put out a plausible answer, even if it's not actually true. This model, however, is one of the safety aspects, one of the safety improvements is that it's more honest. So it'll try to tell you, hey, actually that what you just told me, I don't have the tools to give you the right answer or I actually don't know the answer. Again, we'll see how it actually performs. But uh, there were benchmarks that OpenAI released to support these claims. And they also made their model safety card available, which is a mm. really long PDF, but you could take your time and read it and go through all the different uh, benchmarks and evaluations to take a look yourself. Another thing that uh, ChatGPT, or rather OpenAI announced are some personalities. For people who yeah. don't know, can you start by talking about <laughs> What is a personality when it comes to this chat bot and what are the new personalities uh, available? I love that you mentioned this because this is one of those announcements that I feel like it's easy to also ignore because GPT-5 is like all the craze right now, but they also sprinkled some uh, funner, I guess, chat GPT customization tools. Like now you have the ability to pick a color in chat, which granted is not super, you know, groundbreaking, but fun and this is one of those too the personalities so if you've ever talked to chat gpt and especially with 4.0 uh sometimes it was overly cheerful and you know there's a ton of emojis and all of that kind of thing now um with gpt5 uh, openai share that it's going to try to like reel that excitement down a bit and in addition to that uh there's going to be an option to in custom instructions so that's just like the tool uh the feature which allows you to like customize how you want the responses to be outputted you could select different personalities and the personalities are just like the tone that uh chat GPT speaks to you in so there's an option for like if you like more sarcasm and you don't want the overly hype excited chatbot that's just going to be like yes thank you so much for your answer uh, for your question great like analysis here's the response if you rather it be more cut and dry or if you rather it be more polite you could choose from the four different personalities the one that matches what you're more interested in and that is very much a consumer feature right yeah. when it comes to you and i making use of this i'm kind of curious did this announcement, because one of the fascinating things to me about OpenAI's uh, announcements is they do feel very much laid back and kind of, uh, let me show you what this can do. When they showed the agent, like they were sitting there and having things go wrong and sort of laughing <laughs> through that. And I really like that authenticity. Uh, but we often have, it feels like, sort of in these videos, a focus on the consumer, but a big part of OpenAI's business, right, is the API, is being able for these different yes. companies to use these tools. Is there anything with the new version, the new model um, that OpenAI talked about is yes. for developers, is for uh, the commercial aspect? Totally, yes. That's such a great point. They have so many uh, enterprise customers and also developers that they also have to, you know, take care of, of that audience. And they did. So it uh, is available in the API. And because the model is so it, first developers can take advantage of it because it is the most capable coding model. Like, I don't know if you tuned into the live stream, you saw the live demo. Um, I actually had the opportunity in a press briefing before um, the uh, model even came out to see a demo of all the coding, um, yeah, new capabilities. And it's truly outstanding and amazing how fast it can build like a website, a functional web app from a natural prompt, like a language prompt that would take so long to do manually, right? Like yeah. I'm pretty familiar with like, 
I recently had to go through like building my own like web app and using like JavaScript and CSS and all these different things. And it's just such a pain and it does it so quickly and so efficiently. So again, because of that, because of the less hallucinations that it is prone to, it's more accurate responses because of the fact that there are, um, you know, different tiers that you could select for better pricing. Uh, developers are definitely could take uh, the best advantage of GPT-5. And actually, OpenAI said that for developers, GPT-5 is the best option. So it is available for them too in the API. And there's different, you know, versions and selections they could make to make sure it fits their criteria the best for whatever they're working on. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so they're definitely benefiting from the release too. Lastly, I think I'd love to know, as mm -hmm. you were watching the uh, the the announcement, anything that you think we should we should know about with this that uh, we may not have talked about yet, or even if it was something we talked about, just something that stuck out for you that you're looking forward to uh, as as things are are rolling out. Yeah. Well, first, I'm actually pretty stoked about this GPT five release because uh, again, I think it solves a very practical issue. I think when a lot of people are coming to an AI tool, a, a new AI tool, whether it's a chatbot or whatever it may be, one interaction with it where it works not not to the level they're expecting, it will put them off forever, right? Or it'll, it'll be enough to be like, actually, I don't trust this thing. Now with this option of it automatically selecting the best model, you'll be able to experience higher quality responses, which I think will get more people to use AI. Not that that's necessarily, you know, I'm the biggest proponent for like everybody must use AI, but I think there's some really good practical applications for people's mm -hmm. everyday workflows. And I hope that people are more open to explore it now that they will be getting higher quality responses from the get go um, and also combining speed and, you know, quality. So that's great there. And that's what I'm really looking forward to is I think more people will be adopting it. And I'm really excited to see what people come up with, right? Like more people using it, more application different applications and use cases i'm excited to see that and then from my end something that i would just like to highlight from all the releases that also is easy to just get swept under the rug is that they made advanced voice mode um available to free users too and that's just their voice assistant that is uh you know super conversational and uh could pull information um and deliver it in a very casual like you're talking to like a really smart friend um and i personally use that feature like all the time it's one of my favorite features in chat gpt and i but i've been able to take advantage of it because i'm a chat gpt plus uh subscriber but now free users get it too granted not to the same limit extent but uh i thought that was really cool they're replacing the standard voice mode which i thought is something you should have done so long ago because it's kind of obsolete compared to everything else that they could uh you know provide users so yeah that was one of those features where i was like wait this is like really cool and i actually think i might write a breakout story on it because i'm like this is sick this is my favorite feature now everybody can use it so uh yeah now other people will know when you're talking you're like no i, I talked to it and like, what oh yeah now they can actually see <laughs> see how it oh works, exactly no I remember he's um, gonna be able to experience what like my family and friends are like. Are you talking to ChatGPT again? I'm like, yes, I am. Sorry, um, but <laughs> that's wonderful. I want to thank you so much for taking the time to join us today. Of course, folks can head over to ZDNet.com to check out your uh, prolific uh, coverage <laughs> of all of the AI. Uh, if people would like to follow along with the work that you're doing, is there anywhere they should go to keep up? Yeah, totally. Actually, my Instagram is probably where I post the most up to date um, of my everyday coverage. And that's just at Sabrina for an extra A at the end dot Ortiz. Uh, also, you could follow me on LinkedIn, Twitter, um, all the thing. Oh, well, I guess X, all the things I share all my content on there, too. But yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much for your time today. We appreciate it. Thank you. I hope you have some fun trying out the tools, too. Thanks. You enjoying this tiny taste of Tech News Weekly? I'm happy to hear it. You can check out the full show on our website, twit.tv slash TNW, or you can watch it right here on YouTube. Just click the link below.